This is Twit. There is this great report in Wired from Lauren Good. Uh, it's about the, the actual headline is sex tech companies are having more fun than the rest of us at CES. <laughs> um, CES or more accurately, the group, the company, the organization uh, that runs CES has kind of been a bit prudish. Yes, that's a great way um, to put it. In the past about sex tech. And in fact, um, DiCarlo, who is the uh, individual who is named in this article and this sort of the, the profile of this article, Enzo DiCarlo, um, was in a little bit of a... a a story in 2019 when her team was awarded a CES Innovation Prize in the robotics and drone category for a sexual wellness product. Uh, shortly after she and the team received the CES Innovation Prize, it was rescinded and they said that they weren't going to be giving out uh, that. it was She was disqualified by the Consumer Technology Association because the product was, and I quote, immoral, obscene, and profane. Oh my God. Mind you, this was a product that it was not uh, it was not an anatomically accurate version of an organ, of a sex organ. It was not um, in any normal definition of the word obscene. Um, it was simply a sexual wellness product that for once was marketed to women. And focused on women instead of um, where in the past this uh, any sex tech that's been at CES has not been marketed in that way. Yeah. Interestingly, and this was a, a piece that I wanted to touch on separately, or rather a story that I wanted to touch on separately. Um, interestingly, this year uh, VR pornography has been banned at CES, and normally this is where I would argue for sort of a, a wide range of, of let's allow this tech and the stuff in this space to exist and be able to sort of freely be available to people. But I saw how that technology was misused in the past. That's that particular category. I was at CES and I was there with um, many of my former colleagues from uh, Mobile Nations, the iMore team. And one of my colleagues, uh, a woman, uh, and I were going through the VR area and uh, someone, one of the representatives brought us over and said, oh, sit down, you know, let's have you check this out. And I sat down and again, afraid of brain eating amoebas, I said, no, I'm not going to be <laughs> demoing this technology. Um, and mind you, this was a booth that the the name of the company was all that was listed. Um, and, and there was no clue. There was no clue yet. about what it was going to be. Oh, boy. They put this device on my colleague's head and began to play it. And I kid you not, the representative the whole time was chuckling as this was going on. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, we can't see what she's watching. Right. Uh, I thought she was going to be, you know, watching some silly game or something like that. So did she. And as the video proceeded, she shouted and took the, the uh, helmet off. And then they were laughing more. And she told me what it was. And they had her watching VR pornography <sighs> without telling her what it was, without wow. any sort of warning, without asking for consent to be put into this space and they thought it was funny so i kind of have a bias against how that has been used in the past and, no and I'm kind of happy that it is banned because the thing that i have to say about virtual reality um that differs from these other products is one people are not actually using these other products that are available at ces you know these these sample products are not using in the way they're meant to be used so that is the first thing that it exists in a separate space. You're not actively using it there while you're checking it out with the VR pornography. Right. You are. Uh, and then also there've been yeah. studies that show that virtual reality to the brain can be just as real as actual reality. Our brains are capable or, or rather are in many ways incapable of sorting fact from fiction when it comes to the reality that we experience, which is a little bit frightening, but that's just the way it is. Um, so essentially she was put into a situation that she should not have been put into without her consent and absolutely I, not that's yeah. that's frightening yeah and it was it, horrifying yeah and to to know that the people who were running the booth were actively like it like the way you tell it it seems it sounds like a joke yeah you know and what they I mean? thought it's, it was it, it sounds like a prank of mm -hmm. some sort 
But that's kind of like a prank. Like th- there would be many people that would be pl- be placed in that position. And in this case, against their will, mm-hmm. like like without any sort of choice or or inkling of what was about to happen. And just by by nature of being put in that position, you know, let's say they have a significant other, would feel like they had just cheated on, on their significant other. I mean, there's there's if yeah, there's a whole emotional sexual trauma in their life. Absolutely, so that yeah, could be that's a, that's really crazy. It was horrible. Uh, so. In that way, I'm kind of happy to see. I, I think that they, you know, it, I don't call that prudishness. I consider that to just be a good move based on actually thinking about the people that are involved in this. And so that was a good move. Um, but when it comes to uh, the the rest of this stuff, you know, one of the rules that they've put forth is that these technologies cannot be uh, anatomically accurate right. and, representations yeah, they, of they, yeah they have anatomy. to be basically not fleshy or veiny right none of that kind of thing right um, and in most cases this technology isn't that way anyway um, but it's been the case that you know these uh, VR pornography demos have been a part of CES for a long time, including as early as 2017. Meanwhile, the technology that was uh, marketed toward women was always about babies. Uh, it was, right. you know, it's been baby bassinets or smart diapers or breast pumps or things like that. Um, and so a lot of this technology that is being exhibited this year is for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of it is gendered, some of it is genderless. Uh, but it is interesting to see how this is working. It is on a one-year trial basis. Uh, the CTA is seeing how this goes. Um, Meanwhile, and, the CTA is saying that's how we introduce new categories, and apparently that's not actually the case. Actually but the case. in this case, that's what they're saying. It's like, all right, that's convenient. But, yeah. Okay. Um, and there aren't that many, uh, even you know, now that this, I, and I'm not surprised, there aren't a whole lot there about uh, 12 sex tech companies that are exhibiting at CES this year. Yeah. Um, but I like what DiCarlo says about this, and I think that this is the important point in all of it. Sexual health is health and wellness. The, the category that these uh, products are being put into is health and wellness, and sexual health is a agree. part of that. Absolutely. Um, so I'm really happy that um, Laura DiCarlo uh, has actually, so she won, um, it looks like, a oh, has, uh, yeah, has won a couple uh, CES Innovation Awards. This time they won't be rescinded, which is fantastic. <laughs> and then there was a story in here about uh, how a n- another person who makes um, sexual wellness, or at least is you know, a representative for the company that makes sexual wellness devices, saw DiCarlo, came up, gave her a big hug, and like, can I take a photo with you? You're the reason why we're here. Yeah. Because DiCarlo really did fight uh, with, you know, uh, with against the, the policies that were in place to try to get a change uh, to happen. And the last thing that I'll say about this is I want to quote DiCarlo again. We have demonized female sexuality for millennia. They're taking baby steps. It's understandable because the last thing you want is to open the floodgates to entities that aren't respectful to human sexuality. But sexual health is health and wellness. Yeah. Um, an excellent report from Lauren Good. Yeah, she's uh, awesome. Over at Wired, you should totally read it and uh, check out some of the really fascinating and really helpful uh, sexual wellness products that are coming out. Again, it's not just for uh, women or just for men. Uh, there are categories that can belong to anybody, but there is specifically a product um, to help with premature ejaculation, which is you know something that you wouldn't necessarily put into the health and wellness category at CES that you would see there. That's usually like, oh, golly, I've got to go to my doctor and have this quiet Right, there's such a taboo around all this stuff. And I think that's what's really important here. It's I think there's, there's the perception. There can be the perception that anything sex is taboo. Yes. And, uh, and I, maybe this is something that, that's very much, you know, this person versus that person. You know, everybody falls in different categories. But sex is in and of itself is not a taboo thing it is a human it is a human function uh, function yeah. right it is it is when you start to get into some other aspects of it then it becomes very murky when you get into the pornography side of things there's a whole lot of questions around that so i personally like i i really i'm so happy to read the article and to kind of see that ces and the you know the the uh, the organization behind it is at least open to understanding that and and testing this out this year and hopefully going forward because 
sex in and of itself is not a taboo topic. There are ways to do this responsibly, and it is technology. Yes. And it's kind of amazing what, what you can do with technology now uh, in all facets, including sex health. Absolutely. So why shouldn't that be there? Um, just, yeah. you know. and, and that, I think, I know I said that was the last thing, but if people are kind of wondering why does it matter if this technology is on display at CES, well, not only are journalists there to cover this stuff and give these companies essentially access to more uh, people who might be into it, but also a lot of time, well, not a lot of times, always there are people there who are buyers for different companies that distribute products. Mm -hmm. So not being at CES, which is one of the big trade shows of the year, means not having access to the potential to get in front of the audience that they're marketing to, mm -hmm. not get into stores uh, that uh, have people that they're marketing to, not have access. So by blocking these categories in the past, these companies are not finding more traditional ways to succeed. They have to go elsewhere and may not get into a, not get in front of as many eyes. And so it is essentially um, by blocking them, they're blocking the chance for these companies to thrive and put out products that actually could be helpful to people. Yep, absolutely.